Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we are talking sitemaps in a Next.js application. And sitemaps, it's that XML file that tells Google what all of the different pages are on your website so that it can find them and it can index them so that you have better SEO and searchability on your website. So the site that we're going to be generating a sitemap for is this one right here where we have a secret page that just says the word secret. So we're gonna exclude this from our sitemap because we don't want to include it. Uh, and capsules, these are SpaceX capsules and clicking in shows you some details for that specific capsule. So it's a pretty simple site, but it will cover a number of different concepts, both sort of um, dynamic server side pages that you won't be able to include in your sitemap without doing some custom work for. Um, so code tour, we have our home page, which links to our secret page that's just rendering a div that says secret. We have a capsules index file. So this is the list of capsules and we're using SWR to load them client side from this uh, SpaceX um, API. And then we have for each individual capsule, a page. So this dynamic page here, which takes in an ID and then in the get server side props function, it uses that ID to fetch the data from this SpaceX API, return it as props so that it can be rendered inside of our actual page level component. So this is the site that we're going to build a sitemap for. And the reason I chose to use get server side props is because these aren't known at build time. So you can't just build a static sitemap file and call it a day. This data is constantly changing, so we need sort of a static combined with the dynamic sitemap. So to do this, we are going to be using a package called Next Sitemap. So it's got great documentation. We're not going to cover all of the options for it, so I recommend coming in, reading about it and what all of the different options are, like splitting a large sitemap into multiple files and a few things that we won't touch on today. Uh, so check it out, it's been great. I've used it on a number of my websites. And the first step that you're going to want to do is add a new script called post build. And post build we want to call next sitemap, just like this. So when you deploy your code uh, to say Vercel or something like that, it's going to run yarn build. And then when that's done, it's going to call if you have a post build script, which will generate our sitemap for it. So if we were to come in here and we were to open up a new tab in my terminal and run yarn build, it's going to build all of my static pages. Uh, this takes about 15 seconds, I think. And then you'll see when it's done, it's going to try to call and then fail um, next sitemap. And the reason it fails is because it needs a file next-sitemap.js. So let's go ahead and build that next-sitemap.js. And what this is going to include is basically uh, module.exports and it's, oops, it's going to export um, an object. And this object, sort of bare minimum, it just needs a site URL. So we're gonna put this into a variable here, site URL. And this isn't a real website, so we're just going to say this is capsules.com, like that. So that's sort of the bare minimum that you need. And if we were to run this, so I'm not going to do build again. I'm just going to run yarn next sitemap from here on out. It's done. So what happened? What it did is inside of the public folder, it built a sitemap. So a sitemap is just an XML file that lists out uh, just the different pages on your website and the last time they were modified. So if we came in here now and we went to sitemap.xml, we could see this. And we have three pages. We have our home page, our capsules index, and our secret page that we want to remove. But notice here you don't have all of those individual uh, single capsule pages because they're dynamic and there's no way for this code to really know about it to generate and put those into the sitemap. So that's what we're going to try and solve today. There's another option that you're probably going to want to add, and that is basically if you want it to generate the robots.txt file. 
So generate uh, txt, um, no, it's generate robots txt true. So if we just run this again, next sitemap, it will now create you a robots.txt. So Google's uh, indexer uses this to basically find out what, what pages on your website you're allowing it to index and which aren't. But it also uh, basically tells Google where to find the sitemap. So here's the one that's been created and it's available in the, the public folder. So we're good to go there. It tells it what the host is and for any user agent right now it can index everything slash. So we're going to control this a little bit later as well. One thing I like to do right off the bat is put it into um, git ignore. So I'm going to say slash public slash robots.txt and slash public uh, slash sitemap.xml. And the reason you don't want to commit these two files is because when you deploy after it gets built on the Vercel or wherever you're hosting it, you want it to then generate these files sort of real time on that um, server. I mean, you can commit them, there's no problem. Um, but uh, yeah, so generate robots txt is true. So the next thing I want to do is cover how can I exclude that secret page? And it sort of involves excluding it from two places. So the first thing we're going to do is exclude it from the sitemap. So we can just add in the exclude option and it's going to be an array where we say, hey, exclude the secret. If it was a folder, you could say exclude everything in the folder. Um, so we're going to do that. Run, let me just hit the up arrow. So run it again, go check our sitemap, no more secret in there. Because maybe it's a page you don't want Google indexing, it's, I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe it's not important to, to SEO or it's something private you want to hide. So that's how you exclude it from there. But what if I also want to basically tell robots.txt to disallow this file? So if Google happens to find it, even though it's not in your sitemap, maybe somebody linked to it from elsewhere, uh, don't index this page. What we can do is we can come back and we can add in some additional options for the robots.txt file. So that's robots.txt options. And one of the options are the policies. And this is an array, and each array will basically have the user agent. So we'll just do all user agents. And we are going to disallow slash secret. And then we'll add one more to allow slash, which is the rest of your website. So if we regenerate things again, and then look at robots, you'll now see that it's disallowing slash secret and it's allowing everything else and we've taken care of secret but now we got to talk about the dynamic pages all of those capsule pages that it, it's not known as at build time it's a runtime page that's generated dynamically so what we're going to actually do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it server-sitemap.xml weird name for a folder but inside of it, we're going to put um, an index file. So index.tsx, because we're working with TypeScript today. And the first thing we need to do is sort of just make Next.js happy. So we're going to come here and we're going to export a default um, page level functional component called sitemap. And it doesn't even return anything because it will never actually use this code. It's just... Um, I don't know, Next.js likes to have a, a default component that's been exported. And then what we're going to do is implement get server side props that will sort of find out what are all the pages we want to include in a separate sitemap file from the API. So we're going to import a couple things first. We're going to import get server side props from Next, and we're going to import get server side sitemap from next sitemap. Those are the two uh, pieces we need right now. And then we need to export the get server side props function, which is type get server side props 
and that is an async function that receives the context. So context includes sort of everything about your request, any query params in it. It also includes a response object for you to basically tell the server how to respond. We're actually not going to deal with that at all and instead what we're going to do is return a call to this function which wants to receive the context and then an array of iSiteMap fields. So we'll call it fields and we'll create this array here which will just be empty. So it doesn't like it right now because this could be an array of anything but it wants an array of um, iSiteMap field. So we're going to import that type here and then we're going to tell it that it's going to be an array of iSiteMap field and now it's happy. But what are we going to put into this fields array? We need to basically find what are all the capsules that will have pages on our website. So for that we are going to call the SpaceX API. So if I go over to capsules index, this is the URL for that page. So coming back here, I'm going to put uh, some data here and data will be equal to a wait, a fetch call to that API. And then uh, we can do it in two steps. So, okay, response is that and then data is the response converted into JSON. And we'll just say that it's an, it's an array of anything for now. Um, okay, so these are all of the capsules. So we could even say capsules like this. And instead of any, we could, we could type it if we want, but let's just leave it like that. And let's see what we get back here. Cool. And this isn't anything special here. Like what we could do is we could go and um, visit this page. So it was server-sitemap. And we haven't given it any fields yet, the, the different page URLs that, that should be in the separate sitemap. But we should be able to see down here what each of these capsules look like. And what's important to us is this ID here because that's the thing that allows us to access a page for a specific capsule. So what we are going to do is basically put them into this fields array here. So we're going to say, we don't even need this here, we can say capsules.map each capsule. And what we want for each of them, it's basically an array of objects where each object has a location. And that location is the full um, URL to this page. So we're going to put in here, it's HTTPS www.capsules.com slash capsule slash the ID. So we need to switch this into a backtick so we can embed the capsule.id in here. And another field you include is the uh, last mod. Basically, when was the last time this page modified? If you have a way of knowing that, by all means use it, but otherwise we'll just say it's a new date dot um, to ISO string function call like this. So I'm just hitting save, prettiers prettying it up. And what we've basically done, if I console.log the fields, and then refresh the page here. Because we've put all of these pages into our fields, so capsules.com slash capsules, and then this ID. Uh, if we could go and make sure that it works, so let's go to localhost slash that page. Um, what did I mess up? Capsules ID. Is it not? Capsules ID. All right, I'm interested to know why it didn't load. I must have messed up something. Let's try to figure that out. Oh, nothing's working. What the heck? Let me stop this and refresh it.
Okay, I don't know, I think this page should actually work. Cool. So, now you can see that it's generating our um, server-side sitemap dynamically with the data coming from the API. And how do we sort of tie this in together? How will Google know that there's not just the one sitemap file, but there's actually two? So what you can do is you can go back over, we get rid of this console log. What you can do is you can go back over here and you can add another option to the robots TXT and that's additional sitemaps. So this is just an array that points to all of the other sitemaps that you have. So you can have the one main one plus the other one for the dynamic server side ones. So we'll just embed in here the um, site URL slash server sitemap.xml like this. So if I were to come back here and just one more time generate the sitemap, go take a look at robots. Um, I guess it this would only tell it about the ones. So you'd probably want to add in the original one as well. So you'd come back and you'd say, okay, we've got that one plus we've got one that's just sitemap.xml. Maybe you don't need to tell it because sitemap.xml is the default, but I don't think they will penalize you if you're a little bit more explicit. So here we go. Here's our two sitemaps. Sitemap.xml, which I don't think you need, but it's here anyways. And then the second one, which is dynamic, and Google will go hit that to get access to all of the other pages that can't be included in the static version of this file. So with this tool, we've um, built a static sitemap file, which also generates us the robots.txt. We've excluded our secret page, both from our robots and from our sitemap itself. And then we've come up with a dynamic sitemap um, generator, which will generate all of the pages that, are, um, that come from an external system that aren't available at build time. And with this, I hope you get fantastic SEO and many people can find your website. All right, take care. Bye.